tell me about uh, Troy Cooper, Fred Campbell, Melissa, all them descending on the UK, and how did that go? Okay, yeah, all right. Um, well, I think um, there was a moment I'm, I'm meeting with my local partner here, uh, who is a senior leader of an Anglican church and a respected godly leader in the city. And uh, and we we just knew we were supposed to to do this, to, to see a push take place, you know, a mission week. Um, we also discovered that we had very little time and yet there was a window of opportunity. I made a couple of calls and within a week it was all organized and i think we we did it about six or eight weeks later um so there is a time just to pull out all stops uh because there's a moment there's a window of opportunity you shouldn't plan long term like that but that's what we did yeah and um i think um this is what was achieved First of all, with all the, like, like in Australia, um, in Britain, we, we would feel, you know, it's, it's too hard here. God can't do what he's doing around the world in, in our backyard. Mm. And, of course, you know how easy it is in America. Um, so none, none of what God's doing in the States applies here because right. it's hard here. Right. And. The one thing that will change that perception I've discovered is somebody says, we're going to give it a go anyway. Yeah. And, um, and somebody takes a step of obedience and steps into the harvest with the gospel and stubs their toes, makes mistakes, and somehow in the midst of all that, they encounter God touching people's lives with the truth about Jesus. Right. And that's that's what a mission week does for a whole group of people. You know, we had about 70 people commit at some point during the week and perhaps half of those committed uh, Monday to Saturday, right. uh, afternoon, morning, afternoon and night, right. um, you know, training in the morning, going out in the afternoon and the early evening. And so one thing we did we just were able to say, guys, even if 75% of people in Britain are not yet ready or willing to respond. It's 10.02 here. we got to pray for labor. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to pray, brother? Can. Yeah. Well, Father, we pray for workers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Lord, we pray that you would send them into your harvest field. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only throughout our nations, Lord, but to the ends of the earth. And we pray that to the honour of your name, yeah. that uh, the Lord Jesus would receive the right, his rightful place in our hearts and over all of creation. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So 70 workers going out morning or yeah. training in the morning so going it, out? Yeah, and what it does is it shows, you know, uh, okay, even if 75% of people aren't yet ready to respond to Jesus, 25% um, might be. Mm. You know, we knocked on a 1,000 doors and we just said, you know, we're in, in, in the area and we, we're wanting to bless people and just wanted, is there anything we can pray for you and your family? And of all the doors that opened, that's the thousand doors, um, about, and I think it was 1,200 doors, about one in four said, yeah, would you pray for us? Yeah. And we, we prayed. And then, um, you know, after that, we, we went away, but then eventually began a, a, a ministry of going back and visiting those homes. Yeah. So, and Leicester is, is, is in Britain's most, racially diverse city, uh, 300,000 people, a lot of South Asians, and a lot of South Asians. Um, so it's very representative of Britain. We can say, um, sure, it's hard here, but you can find people within a few minutes walk of us right now anywhere in Britain who are ready 
to, re to receive a blessing in Jesus' name mm. and may be ready for a follow-up visit and, and, and talking about a Bible story or, or your story or, or, a, or the gospel story. Mm. So that was a huge, that, that was everything mm. for us. Um, then the second thing um, that happened is there's a certain amount where Michelle and I go out around Britain um, connecting, selling the vision for multiplying disciples and churches, offering to do training. We'll go anywhere where someone wants us to train. Um, and so we have now, uh, you know, a, not just the people we've trained around Britain, but people who are stepping up and saying, I want to, I want to do something in our city or our town or whatever. Now we, we brought, let's say about eight or ten of those people, we invite them to come in for the week of the push from all around Britain. And even one one guy came, a couple of guys came from Holland. Mm. Now they're in the hot house of the push. They're meeting other practitioners. They're meeting Troy and Fred. And it fast-tracked their development. Mm. It was so important that we'd done some, they'd already done some training, they'd had a go in their own backyards. So they we didn't invite anyone to come into this. But it fast tracked, and then they went home rejoicing and saying, "Okay, what's the next step for our city? We can do this too." Mm. Um, so that was the other. There is something about mobilizing for a push or a mission week mm. if you do it right, and, and of course, don't do it yourself. The, well, do it yourself the first time, but. <laughs> At some point, if you want to do it in a major sort of way with 50, 60, 70 people, then make sure you've been to one that Troy runs or Fred or, or you've got them to come them to come in the first time to help you run it. Yeah. Um, I want to go too broad and big without, you know, having some somebody who's done it well before oh. so that was huge yeah. um, um the ch challenges you know god said do this and we did it but the day we finished was the first day of the summer holidays ah. uh, <laughs> and uh so you can imagine what it's been like doing the follow-up and the second visits yeah. um and you know, I, I got a bit discouraged about that um, and went to the Lord about that because part of it is I feel responsible. Yeah. And yet I thought, I just can't, I can't do all of this. And, uh, Lord, you know, you've, you've brought us, to, you know, and I had to remember, well, how far has he brought us? Yeah. And we haven't lost the opportunity yet. Mm -hmm. And this was the other insight about the importance of the mission week. What's the goal? And we might think, well, the goal is, yes, it is, get into some houses of peace and maybe launch some discipleship groups that can become church. There's another just as important goal is build teams and identify team leaders yeah. who will continue to do this 12 months of the year. Yeah. And so what we're doing now after this, the great push, all the rejoicing, the drop off with the summer yeah. is now, because this is her strength, Michelle is getting around those team leaders, meeting with them again and say, come on, we, we've got to re restart this because with daylight hours here in Leicester, we have a window. By the time we're at the end of September, mm -hmm. it's not a good Time to be knocking on a door where you don't really know the person. Right. So you can be meeting with new disciples or someone you've met with a half a dozen times then. That's fine. So we've got, you know, four to six weeks. And so she's getting around, working with the team leaders, helping them remobilize their team and add new people to their team, even helping new teams to get started right. to make sure that this work occurs and then we'll stop and we'll say in you know october or november now let's plan the next 12 or 18 months mm. um yeah that's awesome and now the other thing that's happened is all right lester's on a roll you know uh in other words we have people now have got this and so the thing that fred challenged us with was you've got to 
you've got to identify uh, and fund um, some citywide leaders. Mm. You, you can't just have, you know, it's going to take volunteers to do this, but there's got to be at least one or two people for whom this is their main responsibility. Now, we can't do that immediately, um, but as we grow teams and team leaders, we're looking for who rises to the surface and some key leaders of the city are saying, well, how can I get some funding so that, um, you know, it, it won't fall back on Steve and Michelle because they're called Britain. But, yeah. but our people running next year's push with Steve and Michelle's help, maybe with Troy's help, and we'll have... Um, one or two people who increasingly, you know, they are the movement catalyst for our city. Yeah. So you're not just doing an event, you're building, a, you know, for 12 months of the year, we just keep coming at this thing. Yeah. And parallel to that, we say, well, everything we've done in Leicester, we could now do in Manchester, yeah. uh, which is a city of four and a half million, but within a 50 mile radius, there's about 11 or 12 million people yeah. in the industrial north of Britain. Um, so what would it take uh, to do some on the ground training there, identify early adopters, uh, build relationships with city leaders, and then, okay, let's, let's do a push next summer in Manchester. Yeah. Uh, or, and, you know, as the Lord leads, it'll be either there or somewhere equivalent. Um, and then now we've got Leicester spinning, Manchester spinning. Mm -hmm. You know, by the time we, we've identified a third city and we're seeing this is becoming a 12-month thing that continues to go on mm -hmm. and, and groups and churches are forming, once you've got three pilots, three models and examples Momentum will build because people will say, you know, the, the the early adopters will see that, the early majority will see that, and other cities will start coming on board. Right. So that's that's our that's our hope and, and vision for the UK. I'm praying for you. <laughs> that's yeah. Was that yeah. a, a bit a bit long? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I was bro, pretending that's to talk super exciting. I I love the hearing <laughs> about it. Hey, uh, I just got a few minutes. Uh, yeah. Since we are recording, I'm going to take advantage of this time. Tell us about your book that's coming out in December. Okay. Well, the book started when I was uh, coming out of China, and uh, I was I was wrestling with the principles of dynamic movements. So that ultimately ended up in the book "Movements That Change the World." And I met two guys called Smith, Steve Smith and Bill Smith. Yeah. Met them for the first time. And, of course, they, they knew more about movements. So, and most of my learning about movements had just anecdotal and some history and some scripture. So I, I wanted to test it out. So I said, well, here's my five principles. And we went through them. And they said, yep, you got them. Well done. And then I said, you know, out of this last trip in China, I'm beginning to think that I've left one out. The sixth one. What is it? Apostolic leaders, you know, pioneering leaders. And they said, well, we've never seen a church planting, disciple-making movement without apostolic leaders. <laughs> and at that point, I was both encouraged and I said to myself, oh, no, it's too late to change my first book. <laughs> you know? But in the sovereignty of God, you know, we wrote that book on the characteristics of dynamic movements. And now it's been time to having then followed up with what, what, what Jesus started. So we're looking at Jesus as a movement pioneer, Paul, the 12, the early church, and, and we're building that basis. Now I can go back and say, well, now let's zero in on, on, on this gift of uh, a movement pioneer, a movement catalyst, someone who exercises apostolic leadership. And we'll, we've, we've already looked at Jesus and Paul in depth um, in what Jesus started, but we'll have another look at Jesus and then dive into the life of Peter, which we do. So there's the biblical foundation. But then um, we'll scour the globe and scour church history for movement pioneers 
and tell their story and distill principles about movement leadership. And, you know, it's not just about the John Wesleys or the Apostle Pauls because, and this was very helpful talking to Nathan Shank, who's uh, in South Asia, to identify five levels of movement leadership, everything from an ordinary disciple who is a seed sower to a church planter to a church, somebody who can help others multiply churches, to somebody, uh, you know, we call that a church multiplier, um, uh, you know, a movement catalyst who sees multiple generations of new churches and disciples and multiple streams. So we identified these five levels that they'll have to read the book to, to learn about um, and then unpacked, you know, how do you help people at each level and how do you help them when they're ready to take the next step? So we get very practical about how you build um, leadership for movements. Um, and, you know, we dive into what Nathan and others are doing in South Asia. But then we jump across to the U.S. and tell the story of the, you know, the Jeff Sundell as a movement pioneer and others like yourself and Fred and Melissa and all sorts of people who, you know, are on the, uh, the cusp of seeing disciple making church multiplying movements yeah. in a western setting so we tell that story and then do some other stuff like um just the the heart of a movement leader how god tests and refines um those those sorts of uh, people and uh, how you can be aware of that dynamic uh, and then what's the relationship between apostolic bands and movements and local churches yeah. So that there's there's partnership without swamping each other or controlling each other, partnership without splitting apart from each other. So how, what does that relationship look like between you know the the missionary band and and the local church? Yeah. There's just sort of where we're going with that that book. That's great. Well, brother, uh, we you know even in this discussion, I. I really appreciate uh, just picking your brain, being instructed, being discipled. And uh, the Lord is, I told you this before, the Lord's used you powerfully. And Deb and I love you and Michelle and uh, can't wait to be around you some more. Are you coming to the States in December, late December? Yes. Uh, I Well, when I say yes, Lord willing, our plan is both to come. Okay. And uh, so just waiting for the final details of when to fly in, when to fly out. Okay. Um, and um, God willing, we'll be there. All right. I, yeah. I look forward to seeing you there at the training. And so thanks well, for well, spending Chuck, the time. I feel that love. I, yeah. I really do. And um, I, I and I appreciate it too. Yeah.